In today's video, I'm gonna break down the shader that I recently created that takes an RGB image and makes it look like a four color CMYK print. Let's dive in. Hey, what's going on everybody? Chad here from grayscalegorilla.com. Uh, a while back, I did a video showing you how to do a really cool halftone pattern, very Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse looking shader in Arnold for Cinema 4D. And that inspired uh, another experiment to see if I could take that same knowledge that I had from creating halftone patterns and go full blown and create a full CMYK four color process halftone look inside of Arnold. Try to do it completely procedurally. So in this video, I'm gonna break down that shader I created with the help of my friend Trevor Kerr. So I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so when I started messing around with this idea and whether or not it's even possible, I knew that, well, number one, I didn't know if it was going to work at all. And so when I started going down this path, I was sort of shocked. But okay, before we get into all that, let's just go ahead and take a look at what the hell I'm talking about here. So um, this just looks like a cool sort of four color process, half tone, uh, CMYK pattern print, right? But if I start to zoom out here, you're going to start to see what the heck it is that I made. I actually created a CMYK four color process shader in Arnold, and now I'm just piping in this Spider-Verse image into it. This is a, a screenshot from that I found online. Uh, piping it through this shader and creating a perfect four color, uh, four color, four color process uh, halftone pattern. And what's great about this, and I'm gonna show you a little bit about how I did it um, and sort of like the, the craziness behind it, but it's pretty simple. This is the entire shader right here at the bottom. And I can increase or decrease the amount of uh, dots that I want just by coming in here and seeing like maybe we want like 500 by like 250. And I'm just roughly, it looks like it's probably a little bit, needs a few bit, a bit more, yeah, actually a bit less to get a perfect circle. That's close enough. But now we can start to, is, is when I make that pattern tighter, you're gonna see the spider start to actually become more visible. And then just like a regular, uh, if you were to zoom in on like a newspaper or a magazine, as you get further out, it's going to become uh, more clear. Uh, I just was like blown away that this was even possible. But first of all, let's just dive into a little bit of, of how this is working. Let's go find a cool shot here of uh, maybe, the two different Spider-Mans over here. Um, how, how's, how am I doing this? How is this working? Well, when I started messing around with the Spider-Verse shader, uh, and if you haven't checked out that tutorial, uh, be sure to check that one out. I started playing around with halftone patterns in Arnold and creating them and figuring out, oh, that's pretty, pretty easy. It's actually pretty self-explanatory. Once you kind of get how it's working, uh, it becomes pretty simple to get. Now, then I started thinking, like, would it be possible to do a full four-color process CMYK halftone pattern and have it actually work, like if you zoomed out, that you would see the image? And it turns out you can, because it's very, it's sort of mathematic in how you approach it. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to get, to recreate what uh, the four-color process is doing. So first I needed to understand exactly how CMYK worked. And uh, let me open up that website. So I went to the um, I went to Wikipedia and looked up CMYK color model, and sort of read about it and understood that it was an additive uh, process where you're adding colors onto white, uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And then I started looking a little bit further into it and noticing, okay, well, there's also these pitch angles for each halftone pattern, and they have to be uh, they have to be sort of rotated correctly to create the right pattern to create uh, the right imagery. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, magenta, 75 degrees black, I can do this. I can do this with Arnold. I, I can do it using the same techniques as I did before. My big hurdle was then, how do I turn RGB into CMYK? So, of course, I Googled that, and I found an online converter, which is great. Um, I'm not actually going to need to convert individual colors to CMYK. I need to convert an entire image to CMYK. Uh, so how do I do that? Well, I knew from this con this conversion site that I could get the formula for making red uh, and green and blue and splitting it out to CMYK. Um, in fact, you can see right here in this table, it shows you exactly what red is in CMYK world and what green is in CMYK world. So I knew this was above my pay grade in terms of my ability to uh, create nodes that would do this math. 
So I, th I thought I might as well use the new OSL shader, uh, the new uh, OSL editor in Arnold. And I reached out to my good buddy, Trevor Kerr, who teaches our Redshift guide to Re Gorilla Guide to Redshift. And uh, I knew that his amazing technical code-like brain would help me be able to figure this out. So I sent him this site. I didn't even really tell him what I was doing. I was like, I need to convert RGB to CMYK. Can you help me out? And he was kind enough to uh, figure it out and hand back to me a OSL uh, network or an OSL uh, shader with the code there. And let's go ahead and look at the open the editor. I'm not going to get into uh, his code mainly because I just don't clearly don't understand it. I'm not a code guy, but if you want, take a look at it. In fact, uh, we'll make this uh, scene file. Um, we'll figure out a way to get the scene file to you guys. Hopefully, um, hit me in the comments if you if you'd like it. Uh, maybe um, sign up for our. Uh, uh, we'll have like an email sign up or something to get to get the scene file. Um, okay, so I sent it to him. He sent back this stuff, and he's like, I th "I'm pretty sure I got it working. I just followed that formula that you gave me." So what I'm doing here is I've got the uh, the actual texture. Let's go ahead and look at that, and then I'm go putting it into a color correct node just so I can easily put in a different image if I want to. I could go boom right into that one and and grab it. So we could, we could just be looking at this as well. That's not actually doing anything. All right, so let's look at the K. So what he did is he extracted the black out, which is what this this mat is doing. And then he extracted the uh, cyan, and all I, like I told him, I just wanted a, a value out. So he's this is the value for cyan. This is the value for magenta. You can start to see all of the crazy uh, JPEG compression from this screenshot. Uh, and then the yellow, right? So once we had that, we knew, okay, well, we, we've got that working. Um, it, it makes total sense. So I'm, I basically just use the same method for doing halftone stuff as I did in my in my previous um, Spider-Verse tutorial, which you should definitely go check that out. And I put that into a range because that's going to drive the size of our halftone dots. So you can see here, uh, let's just look at, I guess, the K, for instance. We look at the K and we take that into the range and all that's doing is saying, okay, the, the, the minimum uh, amount I want that that ramp, if you remember, I'll show you this in a minute. If you haven't checked out the tutorial, I'll just pretend you haven't. This is going to drive the size of our dots. So um, the smaller these numbers, the smaller our dots would be. And really what that's doing is that's going to be controlling the uh, the second node, or sorry, the second knot on this ramp. But before we do that, we're going to transform it and we're going to uh, make sure that it's working in a UV space. So I went ahead and I created a UV for this plane that uh, wraps appropriately across like this. That way um, it wouldn't be, I wouldn't have to use camera projection in this method, which is kind of nice. All right, so that's being piped through. It's just putting it through a UV space. And then our ramp, which is actually um, the, the second knot here is being driven by this range in the position. That's why this is over here. And that's actually why we start to see, if we actually zoom in here, we're gonna start to see those halftone patterns creep in on those edges. So it's saying, okay, uh, I'm using the K as my mat. I'm going to say I'm going to remap these ranges, and then I'm going to give it through, put it through a UV space, and now I'm going to say, okay, where, where, uh, uh, what's the value here? And according to, like in this case, if we look at this, uh, this is going to be black, meaning that the uh, this second position is going to be all the way over here so it's just going to make that black and then in the white area it's going to move it all the way over here just going to make the dots really small and then that gets uv transformed and we repeat it a bunch of times so that's what that's doing okay so uh, it's a lot it's a lot to go through it's really not that complex though and then of course i refer i refer back to my to my model here and said okay well let's go back to that print screen guide okay black is 45 degrees so i made sure that i i rotated my uv transform 45 degrees yep okay cool that makes sense so then i just repeated the entire process again for cyan like so cyan comes in here i range map it the same way i uv transform it i drive the position of the second knot and then i I repeat it a bunch of times. Now this one, I need to rotate 15 degrees and make sure I ro it's rotated 15 degrees, okay. So that was the mat for cyan. And then I've got the mat for uh, magenta, which is the same exact process, doing it again and again, okay. And then I did the same thing for yellow. So basically at the end, I ended up with mats, right? I was just creating mats for black, cyan, magenta, and yellow. 
Then it was really simple. I just brought it, brought it into a layer RGB and made sure that I had the correct, uh, the correct colors in place. Of course, you're starting with white because everything is added onto the white when you're printing in, in CMYK. Uh, the yellow is laid down first, then the cyan, and then the, um, or sorry, the magenta, then the cyan. And the transfer modes sort of became important. Uh, this was more or less an experiment. We didn't really... I think there was, um, it actually was uh, pretty obvious once we looked at the math, but initially when we started messing with it, we were just messing around with uh, the transfer modes to see what would work. But we ended up with multiply um, on top of all of them. Uh, and I mean, I was pretty blown away that it actually works. So when I looked at the output, I was like, oh, I, was, I think I was actually pretty close to it. And I was like, I couldn't tell if it was working. So then I like zoomed out and like, I was like, holy crap, this actually worked. We actually created a procedural four color process halftone shader in Arnold. Pretty rad. So we could actually come in here and zoom in on this and get something like like that. And if, it, if we wanted to create uh, a little bit more of a, of a fine pitch pattern, we could do that very easily. Just come over here and maybe say 1000 by, I don't know, 600. And now we can really zoom in you have to zoom in pretty far. Oop, I think I made that. There we go. Now we'd have to zoom in. We can zoom in really far into his eyeball and still see some detail there. We zoom all the way out. Of course, you're going to get some mooring happening here because you're dealing with a pretty, pretty uh, high pitch uh, point density here. But yeah, I was really shocked at it work. I was super stoked. And Trevor and I were looking at it and we're like, oh my God, this works. It's crazy. So I just wanted to come on here and, and like show you guys this, this method and just how incredibly powerful um, node-based materials can be, especially uh, Arnold. I, I feel like they just have this really uh, great system that you can do just about anything. It seems like it's very, very robust. Um, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this. Um, and if you haven't checked out the other Spider-Verse uh, tutorial where I kind of do some shading stuff in Arnold using halftone patterns, please check that out. Uh, hope you enjoy the video, and I will see you in the next one. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Hope you dug that video. It was a lot of fun uh, kind of coming up with a weird idea to see if I could make it happen in Arnold. If you want to dissect the scene and take a look at it for yourself, we're going to throw a link down below in the uh, description. Get your hands on that. Uh, let me know if you want to see more of these sort of experimental videos where I try to like figure out weird things in Arnold or Redshift or whatever. Let me know what you want to see. I, I would love to know what you guys are after. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.